Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Before we begin today's daily quiz, a couple of important announcements. First, tomorrow on our YouTube channel, we are bringing to you the next explained session where I will be taking a class on detailed analysis of the life of Shinzo Abe, the impact that he has had on India-Japan relationship and the legacy that he has left behind after his unfortunate shooting in Japan. Next, we also have the next National Scholarship Test coming up on 17th of July at 11 a.m. This test gives you a chance to win up to 90% scholarship on the Baiju's IAS courses, which you can avail by scoring good marks in this test. The link to register for this test is given in the description of the video. Do that right away. Let's begin our daily quiz for today with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements. Number one. The Indian National Congress faced its first split post-independence in 1969. Second, the old Congress retained the party symbol of a pair of bullocks carrying a yoke. The breakaway faction was given the symbol of a cow and a calf. Third, in case of a split in a political party, the Election Commission of India determines the allocation of the party symbol. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is D. All the three given statements here are correct and are in reference to what is happening in Maharashtra, specifically in Shiv Sena, where the party seems to be divided into two parts and it is expected that the two factions will have to fight over the party symbols, party finances, infrastructure, etc. This is where Election Commission of India comes into the picture. We are asking this question based on this Indian Express article, which talks about the history of party splits that we have seen in India. It talks about the split in the Communist Party, the famous split in the Congress Party where one faction led by Indira Gandhi became a separate party while the other faction called the Old Congress or Congress O was led by other leaders of the Congress. There are also examples given of the AIA DMK, how that party split went ahead and how the Election Commission of India decided which side will get the election symbol of the political party because that is the identity of the party. Next question number two. Consider the following statements with regards to Article 21. Number one. In Menka Gandhi versus Union of India 1978 case, the Supreme Court said that personal liberty in Article 21 covers a variety of rights which go to constitute the personal liberty of man. Second, earlier in Satwan Singh Sahani versus D. Ramaratnam, Assistant Passport Officer 1967 case, the right to travel abroad was read as an intrinsic part of Article 21. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is C. Both the given statements with regards to Supreme Court judgments about Article 21 are actually correct. The reason why we are discussing this question is because of a recent dismissal in the Supreme Court of a plea which has suggested modifications in the policy of the Indian government with regards to COVID-19. The people in the Supreme Court had argued that they should be allowed re-vaccination for those people who have been vaccinated earlier with the Sputnik V vaccine. Now the problem is that this petitioner himself actually got this vaccine which is of Russian origin and now he is unable to go overseas since the World Health Organization has still not certified Sputnik V in the list of its approved vaccines and that is why most of the nations across the world are not giving him the right to travel to their nations. So he went to Supreme Court saying that this is violating his article number 21 that is fundamental right to life and that he should be given the right to take other vaccines now over the Sputnik V vaccine. But this is where the Supreme Court has declined his request. As you can see from the article, Sputnik V is not accepted as a valid proof of immunity in UK and the US. There are severe restrictions in the European Union for EU and non-EU citizens vaccinated with this particular vaccine. The author here gives multiple examples of how the Supreme Court has interpreted right to life in the past. Next question number three. Consider the following statements with regards to India's climate change commitments. Number one. In 2015, India committed to ensuring that 40% of its energy would be from renewable sources by 2022 as part of its nationally determined contributions. Second. 
India has already installed 162 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity, which is 41 percent of the 402 gigawatts of electricity installed. Third, Prime Minister Modi raised the target at the UN COP, that the Conference of Parties 21, by committing to install 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. Which of these given statements is or are correct? If you look at these facts carefully, you will see second and third are correct. The correct answer is B. First statement is wrong because a 40% commitment that we had made was actually to be achieved by 2030. The great part is that we have already achieved this commitment, so we are 9 years ahead of our target. This is what the Union Power Minister Sri R.K. Singh has pointed out. That we have achieved our clean energy targets 9 years ahead of the schedule. He also says that renewable energy now comprises 41% of our total electricity installations across the country. Next, question number 4. Which of the following best defines windfall tax? Number 1. A higher tax rate on sudden big profits levied on a particular company or industry. Second, a lower tax rate to boost economic recovery. Third, a short-term tax to reduce a government's fiscal deficit or fourth, a retrospective tax decision. The correct answer here is A. Windfall tax is applied when all of a sudden a particular sector or a company starts making a lot of profit, not because they did something great, but because of some changes in the policy of the country or something that happened outside of the country. So it is not because of their effort that their profit increased. That is why the government, in order to balance it out, usually imposes a high tax rate that is called windfall tax. The article here says that the government might review its decision of windfall tax as the oil prices are now sliding. There has been a massive decline in the refining margins of diesel, petrol and air turbine fuel, which has coincided with drop down in the crude oil prices from their peak in June. And that is why the government of India is thinking about this particular move. As you know, the government of India had imposed a windfall tax on domestic crude production because they were selling crude oil at international prices within the country and government did not want that to happen. Next is a previous year question from 2021. Consider the following animals. Hedgehog, marmot, pangolin. To reduce the chance of being captured by predators, which of the following organisms roll up and protect its or their vulnerable parts? You have to choose which of these have a defense mechanism in which they roll up to protect themselves. The correct answer here is D. Hedgehog and pangolin actually are those animals that have this kind of a tendency of rolling up. Marmot is kind of a squirrel. It's actually from the squirrel family and it's considered as the heaviest of those. Let me show you photos so that you can actually understand. So this is a hedgehog, as you can see, rolled up in a protection state. Then this is marmot. This animal does not have this rolling up tendency. And then this is pangolin. Pangolin is also considered a very exotic species and it is actually hunted in many parts of the world. Next, we have a fact of the day and today we will be discussing about India's very first HPV, that is human papillomavirus vaccine. And what exactly could it mean for India's fight against cervical cancer? Now, the great news is that the Serum Institute of India, which is also developing the Covishield vaccine, recently received the DGCI approval for market authorization of this particular vaccine. This is called Cervavac, C-E-R-V-A-V-A-C. This is India's first QHPV vaccine, which will protect women against cervical cancer. Now, cervical cancer has been a major disease across the world, specifically targeting large number of women. And this particular vaccine has now raised hope of curtailing this particular disease. This is preventable, but still kills one woman every eight minutes in the country, as per the experts. This is a very common sexually transmitted infection. Long-lasting infection with certain types of HPV is the main cause of cervical cancer. In fact, so much so that it is the second most common cancer around the world and the second most common cause of cancer death in India in women of productive age from 15 to 44 years. There are two vaccines that still exist in India for cervical cancer. One is a quadrivalent vaccine from Merck and second is a bivalent vaccine. 
each of these cost about 2800 per dose and about 3300 per dose. The HPV vaccine was first introduced in 2008, but it is still not a part of the national immunization program. This new vaccine is similar to the hepatitis B vaccine actually and gives protection by generating antibodies against the HPV virus's L1 protein. This is a good news since increase in the supply of these vaccines in the market will cut down the prices and make this much more accessible to women across the country. This is it for today's Daily Quiz video. Thank you so much for watching.